like we have been going over some uh, documentation about how to treat a client. I'm going to move forward today. I'm going to move onwards towards port scanning. And you guys are going to do port scanning for me. Uh, what does that mean? I'm going to first give you an explanation and then I'm going to give you a hands-on experience with the labs. Why is that important? Because you might think port scanning. I know port scanning. Oh, <laughs> I know port scanning so well. Yeah, I thought so as well until I dove into the help files of these port scanning tools. It is not as easy as it might seem. And this is something that you really need to take into account. I still have my connection upright. You guys can hear me. Yeah, perfect. So this is something you're really going to have to take into account. There are different port scanners with different purposes each. You're going to have to take these purposes into account and you're going to have to make sure that you select the right tool for the right job. What does that mean? We at my company usually go for NMAP mass scan. Why NMAP? Why mass scan? Because mass scan, if you want to select a whole host of targets, if we have like a subnet with a thousand targets, and we want to do a quick, quick port scan, mass scan is excellent for that. If we want to do something more um, to the point, if we want to do even UDP scanning, if we want to do things like SYN scanning, if we want to use the banner enumeration, if we want to use the scripting engine, we're going to use NMAP. So what do we do? We first use mass scan and then we feed the output into NMAP. That's a way of working. We're going to use mass scan in these labs as well. I'm going to let you guys use mass scan, but you're not going to see results of it. Why is that? Because mass scan only works on big ass targets. I don't have a huge lab which you can port scan. I have about a few servers that you can port scan, but we're going to do it at one just to get some practice. Now, as you can see here, we don't have our UDP scans on mass scan. That might be a problem. We don't have a scripting engine with mass scan. That might be a problem. This detection of firewall and IPS, I kind of need to remove that because what does that mean? With this SYN scan, we can kind of evade detection a little bit, but there are more types of scans available with NMAP. And we're going to start with NMAP itself. Now I'm going to go over some often used flags first. I would like you to pay attention to these flags because we're going to use them later on. We can use a normal SYN scan. What is a SYN scan specifically? We have all heard about the three-way handshake, right? SYN, AC, and then a SYN AC. So these are, if you haven't heard about that, let me pull up a graphic three-way handshake so this is the TCP three-way handshake we have two hosts connecting with each other we're going to send a SYN package we're going to get the acknowledgement and then we're going to receive that acknowledgement here so we have our SYN and here at that SYN that synchronization package Basically, I'm not going to go too deep into it, but at that SYN stage, this might be a little bit more clear, at that SYN stage right here, we're going to cut it off. We're not going to complete our handshake. That might be a little bit more evasive of your firewalls. There are much more types of scans available. I'm not going to go into all of them. Christmas scan is one type, for example. Um, I, I can't even name them all out of the top of my head, but I would like to encourage you to go check out the help files for that. When it comes to TCP connect scans, we usually do TCP scans, but we can also do UDP scans. Now if I'm going to start NMAP, what's it going to do? It's going to grab the top 1000 TCP ports by default. UDP ports take a lot longer to scan because they don't have that three-way TCP handshake. They work with a different principle. So UDP scanning, the UDP protocol is going to take longer. What does that mean? 
I always tell my guys, start with a small scan. Start with a normal NMAP scan. Then you're going to add in all ports maybe, or you're going to add in the UDP ports. Those are possibilities. Then you're going to add in your banner enumeration because you then know which ports are open and you can much more directly search. Now, one thing I will never want to see from you guys ever again from now on, is you doing a simple nmap scan so we have an nmap scan hexpert.com now i am going to see which ports are open from now on i want you to to see you using these ports if you do banner enumeration or if you do the scripting engine why is that because it doesn't need to do a full port scan again if i know which ports are open for this now you have other ports than the top 1000 again you have udp ports but that doesn't mean that if i now the next scan let's say that i have a few ports open my next scan shouldn't be nmap-schexpert.com it should be nmap-p and then a list of the ports and then sc and then hexpert.com the whole point of that is because it is faster it brings a little bit of speed <clears throat> now don't worry too much if you don't fully understand that yet I'm just going to demonstrate so this I don't want to see this anymore at least now I know which ports are open so it's always going to do a top 1000 port scan it doesn't need to do that anymore I know that 21 22 25 80 and it might seem like I am nitpicking here but these type of things separate you as a pen tester from somebody who is just a hobbyist because i know which ports are open i'm just going to do the port scan and of course i need to not have a space in here i'm just going to do the scripting engine on these ports which are open i'm not going to do a full port scan anymore what i will do though so after doing this i'm also going to do this expert.com and I'm not using my scripting engine yet because I want speed. I wanted to just do a port scan. So again, forget about that scripting engine for now. Forget about that banner enumeration. Forget about that version enumeration. We're not going to do that yet. We're going to do that when we know which ports are open. Same for your UDP scan. Is that clear? Because it might be a little bit confusing. If it is confusing, if you have questions, please let me know now because this is an important concept. And then those open ports, you feed them to Nmap. Yep, exactly, Spectro. It's all about making speed in those initial phases. So you're going to do your first port scan and then you're going to feed it to more specialized tools which are more like a sniper. First, you're going to do a shotgun shot and you're going to see if you're going to be able to hit something. And then you're going to take your sniper and you're going to finish what you just shot. Any other questions, feel free to ask them now. It's important that you understand this. As you can see, this also takes a lot longer, of course. So. Why do I say never start with a full port scan of everything, including UDP and all ports? Why do I say start with a very small port scan? Because you need to be doing something. Now I can already start. If I have the banner or if I have the version of this software, then I can already start investigating while it's doing my much deeper scans. Uh, dash P dash is all ports, literally all. And the dash P and the numbers is a list of ports. The T4 is the timing engine, indeed Orgus. T4 is mostly used for that. <clears throat> uh, yeah, like the way I kind of do it is the top 1000, feeding into uh, all TCP, feeding into all TCP plus UDP. That's kind of what I try to do. Um, as a scan. Was there not space for? No, you don't have to enter space. It's not a. It's not a requirement.
Now, this board scanning, all fine and dandy. If you can, use ZenMap. ZenMap is a included tool, a GUI tool. And here you can see, of course, intense scans, quick scans, ping scans. You can just get it like here. This is, of course, very interesting intense scans and then of course where is it plus udp all tcp ports regular scan slow comprehensive scan so yeah it, it's definitely an option you can change this command by the way if you want to change this to anything that's perfectly fine so if you want to say sc uh, sv uh, you can add all of these things yourself now, input, we can have different types of input. We can have a, as you can see, a host name, hexpert.com. We can have a DNS, IP address, I mean, sorry. So we can have a host name, an IP address, a list of host names, a list of IP addresses. If I want to put the list there, I think it was IL dash il but don't quote me on that just check the man pages input list oh why well, check the man pages when we have this article right we'll go over these things later but input list is definitely an option there and for ports now you also know that you can do it by number port number 12 uh, or you can do it with all ports or you can do it udp ports so you have options there Port selection is definitely an option. Port ranges is also an option. 80 to 100, definitely an option. And you can even mix it ranges with like normal numbers as well. These are all input options that we can use. We've gone over your version detection. Then I just know which version numbers are on here. OS detection, it might be interesting and this is something that some of you might sometimes forget, but we also have this option, of course, that's dash O, and then you can go hexpert.com, and this is for your OS detection. Script scanning is not correct. That needs to be changed to SC while I'm at it. Let's just do that real quick. There we go. And ping scans here. Uh, was it SN? I will have to look that up real quick. Oh, of course, there we go. Requires root privileges. Of course, I'm just going to add sudo expert.com. There we go. Enter my password. And we have that running. So that ping scan I'll have to look up. Since can we've gone over the specification of ports, OS detection, Dash A, an option that not a lot of people know about as well, is just going to enable OS detection, version detection, script scanning, and trace route. Basically, multiple tasks are included there. That timing template we talked about, that timing template ranges from paranoid to insane, and it controls the speed of your scan. Paranoid is it takes its time, it's going to take a lot slower. T5 is it's going to go at its fastest. Usually they recommend T4. Our verbose output then is going to show us what it's doing while it's running. So that might also be useful. Here you can see that, of course, sometimes it gives a list of potential, um, potential OS's that it might be. Sometimes it is not 100% sure, so you know. And output to a file we've got as well, OA. That is the one I usually use, output all, and then let's just give it a name, uh, output. And then it's going to add output.json, the grabbable file, um, and which other output it was, I can't remember. Uh, but anyway, so we have some examples for you here as well. You can all use them. You can see how far you can get with them. You can see what it does. This one, what's the equivalent of that? Can anybody tell me that? There's a quick equivalent of that. A Zen map should be for Windows and Kali indeed. Yes, that's correct, is dash P dash. That's just the equivalent of that. 
65,535 ports, port one through. Can we have port zero open? Exactly, basic network knowledge, port zero cannot be open. Um, so we have some examples here. You can go through them at your time when you prefer. But right now, I'm going to ask you guys to install Nmap if you haven't already. Here I'm talking about some inputs. Here I'm talking about outputs, which you can do. All very interesting. We have Naboo as well as an option. I would like you guys to install Nmap and Naboo and do me a very basic port scan. So just top 1000 ports and do a bit of a comparison of Hexpert.com and see if they find different things. So we're not going to take too long for that. The installation shouldn't take too long, I think. Let's take 10 minutes. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, PN, so um, Spectro, what PN really does is, let's say that you are scanning a host. How does it know that it can scan a host? Uh, basically, it does a ping and sometimes ICMP requests are disabled. But you know that that host is online and that is why that PN is available. It doesn't do that ping command then. What type of connection does Nabu use? SYN versus full TCP? Full TCP is, it doesn't use the SYN scan, I believe. Give me a second just to make sure. Nabu, uh, the help pages. I, I was just looking into it today, dang it. Uh, let's see. It'll um, input support, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Host discovery scan is experimental, apparently. Where was it? Oh, uh, there we go, SynConnect. So apparently it does a Syn scan. It doesn't do a full TCP handshake. Thanks for uh, bringing that up, Is I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks, Orgus. You guys have my back, it seems. Uh, let's see. Uh, Scanhexpert.com with Naboo and Nmap of 1000 ports. You know what? Let's make it interesting. Port 1 through 1000. Let's make it interesting. All right, Spectro, yeah. Uh, yep, so just one. Yeah, of the, of the not top 1000 ports, but port one through 1000. I'm going to quickly rip, I'm going to 